Wichita Liberty TV, featuring host Bob Weeks. Local politics without the spin. Interviews with nationally respected economists. Hear directly from Kansas conservatives about what matters to you. It's individual liberty, limited government, and free markets. Wichita Liberty TV. Hello, I'm Bob Weeks for Wichita Liberty TV, your weekly source for news, analysis, and commentary about Wichita and Kansas government and public affairs. Broadcast on Great Plains Television, that's channel 26.1, also its companion website, kgpt26.com. Some of you may know me from my blog on the internet at The Voice for Liberty at wichitaliberty.org. The motto there is Individual Liberty, Limited Government, Free Markets, and Economic Freedom in Wichita and Kansas. So if you'd like to learn more about the issues we talk about today or to contact me, well, visit wichitaliberty.org. You can subscribe to the email newsletter, like The Voice for Liberty on Facebook, and follow me, Bob Weeks, on Twitter. Recently on Facebook, a citizen made an emotional appeal to her cousin, who happens to be a member of the Kansas legislature. The topic, as you might imagine, was the school funding crisis in Kansas. I'm going to leave out the names to respect the privacy of both parties. But the writer stated, the children of our state are on the line here. We need our public schools. Well, I'll agree that children need education, no doubt about that. But education does not have to be delivered through public schools. One does not logically or necessarily follow the other. And she also wrote, this is not about politics anymore. It's about our kids, kids who have no chance at attending private schools. And yeah, she capitalized no for emphasis. And examining this statement, that there are kids who have no chance at attending a private school is illuminating. So let's look at some figures. For the school year ending in 2015, the Kansas State Department of Education reports that Kansas schools spent a total of $13,124 per student. Of that, $8,567 was state aid, $1,100 was federal aid, and $3,469 was from local revenue. Now, what does a private school cost? Well, considering schools not affiliated with a church, although some of these schools I'm going to mention do provide a classical Christian education, well, there are some that cost less than total spending and even less than just the Kansas State aid per pupil. For example, tuition at Northfield School of Liberal Arts in Wichita is $5,000 per year. The classical school of Wichita costs about $6,000 per year. Care Paravel Latin School in Topeka, about $7,000 to $8,000 per year. And the independent school in Wichita costs from $10,000 to $10,600 per year. Okay, remember, Kansas state aid to local school districts is about $8,500 per year. So of these private schools I listed, only one costs more than that, and really not very much more. And remember, this writer was concerned about children who, in her words, have no chance at attending a private school. I wonder if she'd be surprised to learn that the taxpayers of the state of Kansas are already paying more than some private school prices. And if the state would be willing to let parents spend these funds at schools of their choice, then any Kansas child would be able to afford a private school education. This could be accomplished in a variety of ways through tax credit scholarships, vouchers, or education savings accounts. Kansas does, in fact, have a tax credit scholarship program, but it is limited, crippled, I would really say, and the Kansas public school establishment hates it and fights against it. Can I say this again for emphasis? People say private schools are too expensive, that we can't afford them, but we already pay more than that. Well, back to the plea on Facebook. The writer mentioned needy kids who have the right to a free and good public education. So I'd refer the writer to my article, Kansas NAEP Scores for 2015, and ask her to take note of the performance of black and Hispanic students in Kansas. 
For example, 42% of Kansas white students are proficient in reading at grade four. But for black students, it's only 15%. So are these students receiving a good public education? Of course not. And is there any amount of additional spending that will correct this? Well, if the money is spent through the existing school system, the answer is no, probably not. At least when we consider any additional sums that are within the realm of political possibility and affordability. Now, there are school reforms available in other states beside Kansas that have been found to be very helpful to black and Hispanic students. These are charter schools. And two weeks ago on Wichita Liberty TV in episode number 120, I explained the research that shows how charter schools are very good for poor and minority students. You can, of course, find that episode at wichitaliberty.org. But the pub Kansas public school establishment fights to keep charter schools and other reforms out of the state of Kansas. Well, in making her plea for additional school spending, the writer on Facebook pleads to her legislator cousin, I know you have a wonderful, giving heart. But when legislators vote to spend funds for any purpose, they aren't giving from their heart. They're simply using the power of government to transfer money from one person to another. And there's nothing wonderful about that. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. Some years ago when I became interested in public policy, I heard someone talk about government schools. And I didn't remember having ever heard that term before. And I wondered, are these schools where one goes to learn about government? Is that a government school? But then I realized the speaker was talking about public schools. Since then, I've become aware that many people don't like the term government schools. So, what is wrong with the term government schools? Well, not long ago, Davis Merritt, he was a former editor of the Wichita Eagle, he wrote an op-ed for the Eagle in which he noted, some have begun to call public schools government schools, a calculated pejorative scorning both education and anything related to government. And this is not the only time people have objected to the term government schools. And let me tell you, public schools bristle at the use of this term. A former Wichita school superintendent once wrote an email to Wichita school employees regarding an upcoming election. He took issue with those who, using his words, openly refer to public education as government schools. Openly refer, he wrote, as though this should be kept a secret, or these are words that should be uttered only in hushed terms away from children. Well, it is surprising to me that liberals and progressives object to the term government schools. They like government, don't they? These people want more taxation and government spending, don't they? Well, when we think about our public schools, we find they have all the characteristics of government programs. Our public schools are owned by government. Their funding comes almost totally from governmental sources, which is to say from taxes. And isn't it strange that few people will donate to public schools? And if you can't use the services of public schools and don't want to pay for them, even if you are also paying for other schools that meet your children's needs, the full weight of the government will come crashing down upon you. And through laws passed by government, public schools are guaranteed a stream of customers. Public schools are regulated, regulated heavily by government. The members of their board of directors, that would be the local school board, they are chosen through a governmental process, elections. Public schools are welcoming to labor unions at the time the private sector is becoming less unionized. In fact, labor unions are becoming a hallmark of government and of government only. 
And then accountability of public schools, just like with other forms of government, is really very weak. In sum, public schools have all the negative attributes of governmental institutions. And as a result, they have few or none of the positive characteristics that make markets the source of continuous improvement and innovation. So I guess it isn't surprising that public school activists, advocates like Davis Merritt object to being lumped in with government in general. But public schools are governmental institutions, and government is really the worst way to supply services except in a few special and limited instances. In his famous book titled Bureaucracy, Ludwig von Mises wrote, the champions of socialism call themselves progressives, but they recommend a system which is characterized by rigid observance of routine and by a resistance to every kind of improvement. They call themselves liberal, but they are intent upon abolishing liberty. They call themselves democrats, but they yearn for dictatorship. They call themselves revolutionaries, but they want to make the government omnipotent. They promise the blessings of the Garden of Eden, but they plan to transform the world into a gigantic post office. Every man but one, a subordinate clerk in a bureau. What an alluring utopia. What a noble cause to fight. That's Ludwig von Mises. And I ask you, is this the way we want to educate children? Well, in his Wichita Eagle op-ed, Davis Merritt equates using the term government schools with scorn for education. But I say that relying upon government to provide education, government with its bureaucracy, with its litany of troubles as listed above, that is scornful, with that scorn being directed at children. Merritt and others want to have the benefits of governmental institutions without accepting the reality of what government means. And that is a shame for Kansas school children. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. Dave Traubert, who is president of Kansas Policy Institute, recently delivered a TEDx talk at Independence Community College titled, Rethinking Education Tomorrow Starts with Understanding Outcomes Today. KPI is a think tank promoting free market principles and limited government, focusing on education, health care, and fiscal policy. You've seen Dave several times on Wichita Liberty before. Here he presents the state of public education in Kansas and what are the prospects for positive change. 